Hello dear listener, I hope you're doing well. We're going to be continuing our steps into the hashtag of my 30 day world with a look at Talon's iconic monsters. As you can see right there, the question of today is what iconic monsters exist in your world? Now, really, there are two ways of looking at this, and honestly, I'm only going to be looking at the one. The first way you could look at it is what iconic creatures from D&D are in your world, and what creature do you feel is iconic of the world that you've made? I'm going to be answering the former. D&D is the game which created Talon. I made it when 4th edition was still in its prime, and as a result, actually, a lot of the magical creatures that you would find in 4th edition would be found in Talon. The difference that I made to it was that I had removed certain sections or put my own spin on different things that you would kind of consider iconic. So the kobolds, for instance, generally considered to be very cowardly, were only ever found in large numbers and were skirmish fighters. They were all about helping each other out, keeping each other alive, giving each other the opportunity. I would use their flanking abilities, their traits, to automat uh, to make a shift as a minor action in order to really make it look like, rather than fighting one kobold, you are fighting Ten. Another beast that I used, which I was, you know, I was pretty happy with, was actually the gelatinous cube or the jelly. I actually used to use, call them jellies more often than not. They were actually more like forms of fungus than how they're generally perceived as, which is like puddles of acid. These fungal uh, growths would be found anywhere where it was wet cold and there was a certain amount of organic matter to feed upon and as a result the party members would sometimes walk into rooms and they would see gelatinous just beginning to glow slime climbing up the walls and such but even with all these things that i felt very very intelligent for coming up with one question continuously came back from my players over and over again and that was what about the dragons Generally speaking, I did not include many dragons in my game. I thought of dragons as apex predators. I thought of them as basically people who are at the top of the food chain and would be in control of large swathes of land. They are civilized creatures, and as a result, they would be involved in taking land and taking control of people. As a result, the party only came across two one of which was dead, and the other showed up at the end of the campaign. This was the event that I talked about before, namely the event of the Moor of the Ocean. During the finale of my last campaign, I really wanted to make, a, make it go out with a bang, so to speak. So I gave the party the ability of uh, controlling this power known as the Moor of the Ocean. One of the party members took control of it and started using it against the five free cities in an effort to destroy it and further the power of her goddess, Melora, who, um, if anybody's really heard about the fourth edition world, she's more of a tempest goddess. She's about the wilderness. She's about the wild being in control of the world and generally doesn't like society and civilization. In this grand world, the biggest, baddest civilization killer will meet the biggest, baddest civilization maker, that being the high magi of the theocratic empire of Maiden. From the north coming down, was a red dragon. Anyway, that's my game. That's my lot. I hope you enjoyed it. Something that I would like to put forward is actually a bit of a shout out to Devay Breon Jackson. The guy, he's uh, reached out to me and he was kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, we're going to get together and we might be doing a Google Hangout and all this stuff. And like, I really do like hearing about his world of Roanoke and I really, really was inspired. Any case, guys, I'm going to go back to looking up how to get a new job. So, see you about. Ciao.